And this is my 3,000 points of Black Templars for the final campaign game. Um, so in front of you there are two detachments. We have a battalion detachment on the left here, and on the right we have a vanguard detachment. So let's go through each there. Oh, also, sorry, the, the back there, obviously there is a super heavy auxiliary detachment as well for the knight. Um, however, let's go into what we brought to this army. So HQ wise, dead centre here. For the battalion we have a captain in Gravas arm who's going to be upgraded to a chapter master. Um, we have one lieutenant with a power sword and the Emperor's Champion, of course. Um, Troop-wise, uh, we've got uh, two Crusader squads at the front here, all with bolters, and uh, each squad has a plasma gun. Uh, one squad has the plasma gun and a plasma cannon. Uh, to the left over here, we have an intercessor squad, 10-man, no upgrades, all standard weaponry. And then we'll move into the heavy choices. We have a squad of five Hellblasters. We have the Vindicator Laser Destroyer. And then finally we have a Relic Leviathan with Storm Cannon and Siege Claw. So that's a pretty nice little setup there. So as that gives me five command points now as per the new beta rules. Um, over on the right here we have leading a Vanguard attachment, the Chaplain with a Jump Pack, no other upgrades, he's got a Bolt Pistol. And he is joined by two Stern Guard squads, uh, one with a Plasma setup and one with a Grav weapon setup. And they are riding in a uh, Razorback with a Laz Cannon in each. Um, and just on the left here we have a, a vanguard squad of 10 men and um, they all have various weapons and I won't go through all of them because there's quite a few but they are all WYSIWYG, a few storm shields, a few power weapons and then finally at the back here we have the uh, relic Duradio, um dreadnought uh, armed with the auto cannons and the alias missile launcher and that's some heavy bolters and then last but not least uh, the knight here, it's knight paladin with a metal gun upgrade on the carapace. So that is my 3,000 points of Black Templars. Let's see what Dom's bought for his word bearers. Dom from Black Templar Studios, and here's my 3,000 points of word bearers I'm bringing today. So we have gone with a battalion detachment and also an outrider detachment. So let's go through the battalion. So over on this side here, we've got two of our troop choice. We've got two 10-man chaos squads. Both are armed with a melter gun, a flamer, and a plasma pistol on the champions. Um, both of them are mounted up in these two Chaos Rhinos with combi bolters and havoc launchers. Down here we've got another five-man squad of Chaos Marines with chainsaws, bolt pistols. The champion there has a plasma pistol. Moving across we've got a five-man Chaos Terminator squad. Now these guys have got Marcos Laniche. They have got their combi bolters. Three of which have power fists, one's got a chain fist and one there's got a reaper auto cannon with a power axe. Moving back here we have got a squad of three obliterators which are Mark of Corn, obliterators, mutilators sorry, Mark of Corn. Back there we've got two Chaos Lamb Raiders, standard, we've got a Chaos Vindicator here. Moving down to the front we have got a Chaos Sorcerer and Terminator armour, we have got a Dark Apostle and we've got a Chaos Lord there with Lightning Claws. As for our Outrider, we have of course got the Vulture, the Warlord of this army. We've got a Corrupted Crozius, a Jump Pack and a Plasma Pistol. Across here, we have got two squads of Raptors, both armed the same, both with two motor guns in each. And up in the building here, we've got a five-man squad of Warp Talons. And also one last thing, we have got a super heavy auxiliary. We've got the Chaos Knight here with the Chainsword, the Thunder Gauntlet, auto cannons on top and the melter uh, gun in the body there. So there we are, that's my 3000 points. We have um, got all our command points. Our Warlord trait, of course, for the Vulture um, is uh, extended radius for his abilities. So, let's have a look at the battlefield and the mission we are playing today. So here we are on the last mission of the campaign. And on this planet that came out of what can I be described as the warp, um, has appeared in the middle of this current star system that the Templars and the Word Bearers have been fighting in. And all of the forces have headed towards this location, knowing that it's the key to the artifacts that have been collected. So, as you can see here in the middle, there is some form of portal which has been obviously left in this ruined city and has only just materialised into being now. And around it, there are six 
artifact holders. And at the moment, you can see that two of them have two, well, two of them have a artifact in each. And those are the two that had disappeared into the warp, having been drawn to this place automatically, sitting dead center uh, in this wall, which is obviously uh, quite good for whoever needs this ritual to succeed. However, as you can see, there are four plinths actually unpopulated at the moment. And as we know, the word bearers currently are in possession of three of the relics and the Templars are in possession of one. Now, the way this is gonna work is that the word bearers have to populate as many plinths as possible and the Templars have to remove and uh, depopulate them as uh, best as possible to prevent the ritual. So, and we'll see how that pans out in a moment. So with both forces now deployed on the desolate planet here, they lined up ready to charge the portal to claim the final victory in this long, gruelling campaign. The Templars have been hard pressed throughout the entire campaign, but are now going to try and uh, pull back some of their glory. Um, down here, the newly appointed chapter master of the Galeris Crusade is ready to hopefully push back the tides of chaos while the vulture sits up on his warp location, ready to portal down onto the battlefield and lend assistance where he is required. So we all know what the objectives are here in the middle. However, just to let you know where everything is, this Land Raiders squad has one of the relics on board, as does this rhino here and this rhino over here. The Templars, knowing they have to keep the artifacts away from the portal, have placed their one up on this balcony with this Crusader squad. Hopefully they'll be here at the end of the game to hold it away from the chaos um, corruption that is abound to happen here if they let them go unchecked. So at the moment, Chaos is going first as they finish deployed. Dom rolled a six to uh, actually get first turn. And I'm now gonna roll to see if I can seize. Not today. Chaos! <laughs> Chaos is going first, so we'll be back in a moment with Chaos, turn one. Right, turn one for the Chaos Forces and our movement phase here. We've had a general advance across here, although the Rhino back here is holding ground. Engine just running over, getting ready for a push. But for now, the Land Raiders moved up very so slightly there, taking targets down the field. Getting ready to take out some of that armor the Black Templars are bringing to this battle. This Rhino here is just pushed up against this building. Uh, the knight has gone for a charge down the center to draw some fire. So he's got his 12 inch movement plus three on the advance there. So he's charging headlong into the fight, hoping to absorb some firepower and potentially get in there the following turn. So let's move into turn one, shooting for the word bearer. Right, so first bit of shooting here, we've got the Land Raider, it's going to fire his last cannons down the field into the Leviathan. The Leviathan is a big threat for the word bearer troops as they come out, they're going to be shredded by the firepower that thing can bring out. So it's going to fire the last cannons there. The heavy bolters are going to be firing across the field up into the building. They've heard rumours that the relic they require is down there and they're going to put some fire into that building there. So first off, let's fire the last cannons, four shots on freeze so that is three hits onto the leviathan leviathans are toughness eight so winning on freeze right so that's two wounds four up invulnerable go on here we can that one got free oh one straight away no didn't work right so d6 damage three damage on there so that's a good little start there. And next off, we are going to fire the heavy bolters up into the Crusader squad in the building. So six shots, hitting on freeze. So all hit there. Wounding on freeze. So that's four wounds on the Crusader squad. Tom, do you want to roll some saves? So they are fully within that ruin. They are fully within the ruin, yep. Oh, sorry, so a free up save, ignoring the minus one. Uh, they are all okay. They are all okay there, so never mind. Right, so next we're gonna be rinsing and repeating. So this one is doing exactly the same thing. We are aiming to take this bad boy out. 
So four shots from the Las Cannons coming in. One, two, three. Wounding on freeze. One. Uh, I'm going to use command point actually and reroll one. Yep, so two. Two saves for the Leviathan, please. Two, four. One's got three again. So three more wounds on there. And finally, the heavy bolters into the Crusaders again. There we go. Take them off. Four hits. Winning on freeze. And there we go. So strength five, toughness four, winning on freeze. Four have got through. And four free ups. Two, dead. Two have gone down. Right, okay. So let's see what happened in the rest of the shooting phase. Right, so the remaining of turn one shooting for chaos. Demolish cannon fired in here. One shot, one wound inflicted on there. Not great, but it did take more damage. It took three wounds here from the chaos uh, rhino firing havoc launcher. Three wounds is pretty incredible for a, a, a havoc launcher, in my opinion. So that's quite good. Uh, also, another shot was fired down the field here. Uh, at the Leviathan there, and Leviathan saved, because of course uh, Havoc Launcher's got no modifier, so it's quite happily saved there. Um, we're going to move on now to turn one for the Templars, because of course there's no assault turn one for uh, Chaos. So let's see what the Templars can do in response to this fire. So as the Templars at turn one commences, and movement has been done, over here, the Hell Blasters have decided to scoot around to the left here to get a sh shooting solution at the Vindicator through that window there and around the edge. Uh, the Razorback elected to stay still as well. In the middle, quite a bit of movement here. This Incest Squad has moved up with the Emperor's Champion towards the goal in the middle to try and prevent them from putting too many of the relics down. The Leviathan has also taken centre here. Having, having absorbed a lot of fire in the first round, he decided he needs to put some shots down quickly. Just like likewise with the knight there, he's heading towards those land raiders hopefully. And everything on this side of the table stayed still because it's where all the main shooting power is uh, against armour. So we'll now see what happens in the shooting phase. So at the end of the shooting phase in turn one for the Templars, over here, we had quite a lot of damage done to the Vindicator. I think we took out seven wounds in the end from various sources. That was from the Hell Blasters here, Laz Cannons. Um, we did try and finish it off using the Plasma Cannon up here, but managed to um, actually get slain by himself overcharging. Not brilliant, really. Um, in the middle here, the Leviathan shot all of its weaponry into the uh, Knight here, along with the Laser Destroyer, the Derradio, and this Laz Cannon here. And I think we got it down to seven wounds so actually not too bad that's, that's reasonably good going and also the battle cannon over here shot into the sorry the land raider in the middle here and took off two wounds as well so we're now going to move on to the assault phase and see what happens so at the end of the combat phase for the templars in turn one the knight has come forward victorious taking out the enemy knight and is now getting himself in position to protect the portal from artifact laying chaos. So, at the end of that turn, we'll now move on into chaos, turn two. Turn two, movement for the word bearers. So pretty much the chaos line back here has remained stationary. Core Kid, the Chaos Lord, has disembarked from the Land Raider. He's putting some support in with them so they can fire into the uh, Black Templar armour. Down here, Vindicator so says, remains stationary. Potentially going to do some firepower into the Hell Blasters here. But back along here, the 83rd War Host have come in strength here. We've got a squad of Terminators and a Sorcerer down on this part of the battlefield. The Vulture and his retinue of two raptors and warp talents but have also come in down here. So let's see what they can do in turn to psychic and shooting for the word bearers. End of turn to psychic and shooting for the word bearers. So down here the Vindicator fired, killing off two of the Hell Blasters there. Had to use a reroll um, to try and kill another one off to try and add a bit of survivability. Down in the centre here, both of the Land Raiders fired their Laz Cannons into the night. Heavy Bolters 
firing against the Crusader squad at the rear. Uh, the Knight is now on 19 wounds, is that? Yeah, that's right, 19. 19 wounds. Um, the Heavy Bolt is fired in here, killing off uh, one of the Marines. Down on the backfield, Terminators fired into this squad here, doing nothing. We even used Endless Cacophony, they did nothing on them at all. The Reef Broadtech Cannon fired into the Leviathan and did nothing twice. <laughs> down here, however, the Raptors fired into the Vindicator there, taking it down to three wounds. We got off warp time onto the uh, warp talons, which had leapt forwards and were hopefully be engaging in combat there. And that is pretty much it, really. So let's move on to Assault, and hopefully the Werebearers can uh, cut a bloody toll onto the Templars. At the end of turn two for the Werebearers, the Warp Talons charged in here, killing off the Lieutenant in a deadly attack, causing one more wound onto the Vindicator there, and a heroic intervention from the Chapter Master here killed off two of the Warp Talons. Another re-roll was, re was used to save one more because a lot of damage from that Burning Blade came in. Um, and that was it for Assault. Let's move in to turn two for the Templars and see if they're able to push forward this advantage they currently hold. So as we commence turn two for the Templars down here at the end of the turn, or well, at the end of the movement phase, the Vanguard veteran squad deployed back here with the chaplain, ready to try and strike in the rear lines, uh, kind of very similar tactics to what happened over that end of the board. Uh, the Knight has crashed forward through towards the Land Raiders because it, it recognises them as quite a heavy threat, although he's probably a little bit nervous about charging them because of the amount of lads cannon fire that will come in. Um, the Leviathan has also answered the call and is heading to the portal to block off the placement of relics and the intercessor squad backing him up as well. At the back side of the board here, we have had one squad of stern guard jump out, training its grav weaponry on the terminators over here, and on this side, the same again, except these guys have got to deal with the raptors here. Uh, sorry, the warp talons. Uh, the leader has fallen out of combat, so they have a chance to fire <coughs> some shots in. Apparently cowardly, I would say tactically. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously the laser destroyer has moved out as far as it could that way um, it's limping a little bit and it's not looking too good because it can't fire now at the moment because it moved out of combat so that's the end of the movement phase uh, oh one other thing sorry the emperor champion has seen there's quite a few uh, special characters at the, end of the back of the board and in true uh, emperor champion style has decided that a bit of one-on-one -on -one combat i mean it's not very usual for the uh, web to deal in one-on-one -on -one combat normally they run away as well. More uh, justice. More justice or cultists are normally the order of the day. So, we now head on to the shooting phase. So at the end of turn two shooting for the Templars, a hell of a lot of firepower unleashed this round over down here. They did lose one Terminator to various shots from the grav weaponry here. It was the Laz Cannon that actually finished it off in the end, but it did take all these guys, all these guys to shoot in, even the Emperor Champion fired a, a random bolt pistol shot in this direction to try and get uh, a, a kill. Um, over here, the Derrida Dio, with the help of these, this plasma squad here, fired into the Warp Talons and also this Rap squad that was here and killed both of those squads. Did manage to chip off one Raptor over here, so the Vulture is slowly losing his retinue. Um, we'll see what happens to him in a minute. Um, in the centre of the table, or park, um, everything here fired into this land raider and managed to take it down to two wounds remaining. So it's still alive and I've got to unfortunately take a bit of overwatch there um, with a lord sitting at the back so we'll see if that helps out. And then finally at the back here the bolt pistols from the vanguard squad did pile into the rhino but did nothing. So that is the end of the shooting phase. We'll now move on into combat. So as combat ends in turn two for the Templars, um, the Emperor's Champion unfortunately failed his charge uh, towards this area of Terminators, um, but uh, he lives to fight another day, obviously. Over here, the Knight did charge in. He took, a, he took a few wounds on the way in, actually, to the Land Raider. I think it was actually four in total. Um, so he's down to 14 wounds now. Um, uh, he did manage to kill the Land Raider, and obviously the troops have had to get out there. Um, it did blow up, but there was a re-roll on a command point because uh, Dom did not want to suffer any more casualties than was necessary. Um, the Leviathan then saw it was in range of this land raider, 
I decided to have a charge and lost four wounds with Overwatch and didn't make the charge. Um, so he's not too happy about that. And he's probably quite angry on the inside, as usual. Well, more angry than a Leviathan is, I suppose. And at the back here, the Vanguard all charged in here um, and it didn't do much damage at all. It's down to six wounds and we'll now move on into Chaos, turn three. And free movement for the word bearers. So the Marines have had the orders all disembarked from their transports. The squad here now occupying the ruin. They are moved along here. Over here, Rhino's just got out of combat. The squad that have disembarked are surrounding the Chaos Lord. They're protecting him from uh, a possible night attack. The mutilators and the Dark Apostle have moved up forward towards the um, Primaris Marines there. Across on the other flank, this squad have also disembarked from the Rhino. I'm going to be putting a melter shot in there with some plasma fire. Hopefully it'll be enough. I doubt very much, but we're going to do our best to try and take care of that abomination. But down here, the Terminators and the Sorcerer are pushing forward towards the Empress Champion, knowing that he is a zealot and will charge them in the next turn. They're going to take the fight to him. Down here, the Raptors have moved up here and being going to put some uh, fire in against the, the Drado. The Vulture, perched up on this building, is going to get a potential charge off here and slaughter his way through some Crusaders. So let's move into Psychic and Shooting, turn three for the Word Bearers. Right, so turn three, Psychic and Shooting for the Chaos Forces. So over here, a couple of casualties are taken as Flamer and Bolt Fire fired down into the vanguard there, can a couple off. Um, over here, the land raider fired everything it had and used the last command point into there, taking one wound off of that beast. Down here, bolters, melters, flamers, plasmas, everything fired into the night. It's taken down to eight wounds now. We're gonna get a potential charge off in a moment. These Chaos Marines need to sell their lives dearly and slow that beast down. Across the field, we had Terminators firing into the champion. They did nothing against his armor, but a uh, smite went off, reducing him down to one wound there. And finally, across down here, the Melters and Bolt Pistol fired in, taking him down to 10 wounds. And the Plasma Pistol from the Vulture fired in and frizzled against the power armor there. So we've got a few assaults this turn. Let's hope some of them work out. Let's move into turn three, Assault for Chaos. Turn three, Assault for the Word Bearers. So down here, both squads and the Chaos Lord charged into combat with the Knight. And the Knight is now down to six wounds. The Chaos Marines took two casualties through the stomping attack, and since it's on the lower bracket, it's a bit harder to uh, hit the uh, men running around his feet. Down here, the Mutator's got a successful charge off into the Marines there, and killed two and a half of them. So one's mortally wounded, I'd like to think. And they took two wounds back on the Mutilator there. The Apostle attempted as well, but unfortunately wasn't able to get into combat. Down here, the Terminator's charged into the Emperor's Champion and gave him a very, very thorough fisting, and he is now gone. Across the field, the Raptors charged into combat here against the Dreadnought. In Overwatch, the champion of the Raptors died, but the Raptors are now locked that into combat. And up here, the Vulture jumped into combat, killing three of the Crusaders and took a bit of damage back in return. So that is the end of turn three for the word bearers. Let's see what the Templars can do in their turn three. So as Templars start turn three, uh, the movement phase has been completed. Over here, the chapter master's jumped up a floor ready to try and charge the vulture in a minute. If he can fit on the edge there, which he should just be able to. Um, the Plasma uh, Stern Guard here have come around the corner as the Duradio has come out of combat with this squad here, so they need to finish them off to get them to be able to shoot the following turn. Over here, the Grav weaponry on the Stern Guard here are all aimed at the Terminators, probably with a bit of assistance from the bolts up here, try and thin them out. The Sorcerer is still not a valid target. 
The laser destroyer here is ready to go start shooting again. However, its effectiveness is on quite a low state now, being on two wounds. And into the middle of the table here, the knight has backed out of combat so that it can use its weaponry on the various targets in front of it. As has over here, the Primaris have dropped out so that the Relic Leviathan can fire a few rounds into the mutilators because they are quite nasty in combat. And finally, on this end of the battlefield, the Vanguard veterans have made a jump over here and are going towards uh, the melee over here, obviously ignoring the land raider, not really effective against that. The chaplain, however, has had to take a little detour because it couldn't keep up with the initial charge of the Vanguards, not wanting to get itself into a silly shooting match with the uh, Bolter Chaos Marines up here uh, with, a, you know, with melter guns and things like that. So that's it. And then also the Hell Blasters here have snuck around the corner because the Dark Apostles left himself vulnerable. Hopefully they can finish him off. So. Let's see what happens in the shooting phase. So at the end of turn three shooting for the Templars, down here the Terminators have been thinned down to two, and that was from the grav guns here and also all the bolter fire at the top. Uh, swinging over to this side of the board, the stern guard vets here managed to take out the remainder of the Raptors quite easily. Obviously there was only two left and lots of plasma shots dealt with them. In the middle of the board, the Leviathan managed to thin out the mutilators by one and a half uh, by using its heavy flames on them. It also shot a few rounds into the land raider along with the knight here, taking it down to five wounds. So pretty good shooting there. And finally, um, the hell blasts here all shot into the apostle, uh, taking off a wound and they're not particularly successful. So we'll now move on into the combat phase and see if they can kill a few more units. So at the end of turn three, combat for Templars. Over here, the Vulture was struck down by the victorious uh, chapter master up here, and he now stands lording his sword above everyone else. <laughs> um, in the middle here, the Leviathan charged in and actually got completely minced by the Maul of Fiends. Uh, not the Maul of Fiends, sorry, the uh, um, Mutilators, pardon me, that's the ones. Um, so they have now actually consolidated into combat and they are ready to take on that Primaris squad. Uh, likewise, over here, the Hell Blasters managed to take off two wounds from the Dark Apostle, but he did one back to them. Over here, the Knight finished off the Land Raider. However, he is now sitting on a precarious four wounds. Um, and in the middle here, it was pretty much even uh, for this fight with the uh, Vanguard and the Lord and the squad of Chaos Marines. It was probably down to the fact they didn't get re-rolls with their hits because um, the Chaplain, again, is sort of sitting back over here. So that is the end of turn three. We'll now move on to turn four for the Word Bearers. Turn four movement for the word bearers. It's now a desperate time for the uh, remaining of the 83rd war host here. We've got this squad of marines have now slowly descended from the building. They've got a melter gun, they've got bolt guns, they've got a plasma pistol. They gotta take this beast out. They need to take the center, so they will be firing everything they have into that thing. Rhinos stayed put. The only other movement really to report was the Terminator and the Sorcerer are moving in to support the Mutilators in the centre. We're going to go into Psychic and Shooting now and hopefully we'll get a warp speed off with the uh, Sorcerer to make sure he's closer to the fight. Although he has advanced, so he's not able to do anything, but he doesn't want to be the closest target to a lot of Marines back here. So, let's move into turn four. Psychic and Shooting for Chaos. A turn for psychic and shooting for the word bearers. So not much really happened here. We got a smite off with the sorcerer, everything else failed. The smite went off, killing off one of the crusaders there. Down across the field, both the rhinos fired everything they had into the knight. The knight is now down to three wounds. Even with fire coming in here, um, I think one bolt gun actually stripped a wound off the knight. Melted missed, plasma pistol overcharged, but didn't wound unfortunately. Um, down in combat here, bolt pistols fired off into the veterans, killing off one in combat there. And that was about it. Um, so let's move into assault and hopefully the word bearers can uh, kill a few more of these uh, lap dogs of the false emperor. Moving on to the turn for assault for word bearers. Turn for assault 
for the word bearer. So in came the Terminators in here. They did absolutely nothing to the Primaris, just fumbling all over the place. And the Mutilator Zoe killed seven of the uh, Primaris Marines there. A very high roll on the strength, a decent minus two and uh, free damage each. And you yeah, hacked their way through the Primaris Marines there. That was pretty good. Down here, we've got to charge off with the Chaos Marines down here. There they did one wound, um, well it's down to two wounds now, the knight there. They lost a few um, in total, but they passed their leadership. Uh, and down here, one more Chaos Marine fell and the fight is still uh, a bit of a stalemate. Oh, the Chaos Lord took one more wound there. And finally down here, the uh, Dark Apostle killed one more of the Hellblasters, but then uh, fell to their attacks. So that's it, let's move on to turn four for the Black Templars. So as turn four commences for the Black Templars, they start to see that there might be a victory in their grasp here. So they're gonna try and push on the center um, with whatever remains of their force. Uh, the Knight has backed off in the middle here to try and use its weapons on that remaining Chaos Marine squad. The Hellblasters here have moved towards the Mutilators as the Primaris has bravely run away. Um, and over here, uh, the Derodeo has opened up a space for these Stern Guard to get a shooting solution on the Sorcerer, as is these ones here as well. And obviously we have a load of bolters up in the ruins. Um, that is pretty much all the movement, um, except for the Chaplain who is now thought it's safe enough to come out of hiding and head towards some combat over here, as his uh, Vanguard squad is getting slowly whittled down by the Lord. Um, so let's move on to shooting for the Templars. So as turn four shooting for Templars finishes, a lot of fire went into the Sorcerer over here and he was finished off and likewise for the Terminators and the uh, Mutilators were all taken out by various plasma shots from here and the Hellblasters over there. Um, Derodeo shot over into the Rhino over there, taking it down to two wounds. Um, the Knight shot all his weaponry into the squad in front of it and took another couple of people off, but not too successful shooting there. Um, but um, that is pretty much the end of the uh, turn for shooting. We'll now head on into the combat and see if we can finish off this squad of Marines. So at the end of turn four combat uh, for the Templars, uh, we had a bit more combat going on here with the I think we lost a couple of guys here and also the uh, I lost two of my vanguard in this squadron here. So not a lot left uh, on the board in the middle at the moment but we're going to move on into turn five for the word bearers and see if they can put some objectives down. All right turn five movement for the word bearers. So this squad have fallen back but have placed the relic onto that objective there. The relic's there, we've got one that's already there and one that's currently there. So at the moment we could win, although it's desperate times with five Chaos Marines left, two Rhinos and a Lord. But it's all about getting that warp portal open. If we can get that open, the planet is ours. So in movement phase, the Rhino's pushed up here. He's going for a, a ram. <laughs> going to charge into the night, hopefully, and to deal with final blows to this beast. Um, down here as well, that one's attempting to, but it's only on two wounds, so it's got chortling along, a lot of smoke pouring out of it, it's not doing too well. So let's move on to turn five shooting for the word bearers and see if they can kill anyone. Alright, so turn five shooting for the word bearers uh, and assault, we're rolling into one. Shooting, nothing happened at all. A few um, shots went in, Havoc launchers fired at the night. Uh, we had Havoc launchers fired down here into this Primaris Marine as well. Uh, plasma pistol and bolt pistol fired into the night before they charged in. In assault, however, the um, two Marines killed off one of the Vanguard. The remaining Vanguard, however, took the last wound of the Chaos Lord there, so the Chaos Lord has fallen. The Rhino charged in, took three wounds to Overwatch, and um, has locked the Knight up, but of course the Knight can now escape and carry on stomping all over the Chaos Forces. Um, on a positive side, there's plenty of room in these Rhinos for the surviving Marines at the moment. <laughs> so we're going to move on to turn five for the Black Templars. So 
So as turn five commences for the Templars, movement has been completed with the chaplain jump out jumping in here and thieving the, the relic off one of the plinths to try and secure it before this portal managed to erupt into life. And over here, one of the primaries tried to get towards one of them, but did not quite get into range. Um, everything else has stayed put because they can't really aid the battle now because they're too far away. And over here, the knight has stepped out of combat once again to try and rain some more fire down on the various units around its feet. And the remaining vanguard has stayed in combat to try and fight down these last two traitor marines in this squad. So we're we'll back in a minute with uh, shooting and combat because uh, there's not too much left to do and see what happens. So as the Templars finish their turn five, they have managed to remove all of the enemy units from the table. Um, in shooting, a lot of shots came in from uh, the various left eye weaponry here into the rhinos and managed to finish them both off in that turn. And then finally, uh, the knight took down the last three marines there. And also this avant-garde fought off the last two of the chaos marines. The chaplain here managed to last gas attempt to remove one of the relics off the plinth therefore leaving three relics on there. So we'll be back in a minute with a wrap-up of the game. So, as the battle finishes, the Templars have just scraped a win on the battlefield. The, t the portal was almost about to erupt into life and change this area of the galaxy completely. However, the chaplain here managed to remove the, one of the Wand of the Plinth before it activated and then also the rest of the Chaos Forces have been wiped out to the man leaving the Templars on this desolate planet, licking their wounds, having taken an absolute beating over the entire campaign, finally merging to win at the last gasp, um, saving the Galeris sector here um, from doom of whatever was going to come through that portal or whatever it was going to do to this section of the galaxy. So, that is the end of this campaign, uh, with the Templars somehow pulling through at the end, although it was a very, uh, very bloody campaign for them. Um, Dom, any uh, units of this particular game? Uh, probably the Mutilators. They did uh, a lot of damage. Took out the Leviathan uh, and a squad of uh, Interceptors, are they? In Intercessors. Intercessors. Yes, that was it. Yeah, they Primaris did. Marine. Actually, that was pretty horrible. Seven in one go was very yeah, nasty. Yeah, so yeah, did really well. They did uh, like under 130 points. Yes. And uh, easily did, uh, did their points the worth. Back. Yes. So yeah, I'm really happy with them. And for this game, for me, the knight definitely shining through for the sheer amount of um, sponge ability it had this time. But <laughs> it just would not go down. It's sitting there on two wounds at the moment. So pretty impressive for the whole game. Um, however, the campaign is now over. So there will be uh, not so much Templars and uh, on the channel for a little bit. I think while we uh, sort of get through some other games that we've had recorded. However, thank you very much for watching the whole campaign. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions on improvements or ideas for another one um, that we can uh, tag on for mission ideas and things like that, we'd love to hear them. Um, so from myself and Dom, this is the Black Toad Studio. Goodbye and see you soon.